Hello, traders. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Good evening, or good afternoon, or good night, wherever you may be in the world. How's everybody doing? How's everybody uh, everybody staying safe? This uh, you know this this virus that we've that has changed our uh, our lives here, um, not just in the markets but just our everyday lives, um, has definitely been a little bit exhausting. I think we can all agree that uh, you know no sports on the weekends is is a horrible thing. <laughs> um, and let's see. So the futures opening up here. Nasdaq uh, trading lower, but that's uh, I, I think it's adding um, after the four thirty um, uh, trading halt here, and then fell some hundred points. But anyways, as the markets are opening, let's begin here. Um, yeah, so any questions you guys have, thank you, Gary, just put them in the chat. I know there's like a Q&A option, but uh, you know, I just, I, you know, just type it in in the chat and that's where I'll see it. I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna flip flop between different views. Yeah, so any questions you guys may have, please feel free to ask. Uh, throughout the presentation here, and um, and then we'll uh, I'll answer those. So uh, we're going to start here looking at the Nasdaq, right? So we're we're talking roller coaster, and you know there was a, a really nice article. Uh, it's on the Trade the Fifth website, and it's it's called uh, you know finding the groove. Right, and we spoke about it last time we had the roller coaster webinar, and uh, pretty much it's it's finding that right time frame for whatever instrument you're looking to trade, and it's in a sense it's just like you know backwards or, or back testing, right? Looking at performance based on the indicator of pat, uh, past trades. And, you know, obviously past trades aren't indicative of future trades, but it does set the, uh, a bit of a trend of, you know, what's to be expected. Uh, this is not a daily chart, Mark. This is uh, a one minute in the NASDAQ. And the reason I started looking at the one minute um, is because I found a pretty nice groove here with the one minute chart. And the one minute chart, uh, it's a fast chart, but it's it's also a chart that uh, squeezes the amount of risk based on you know uh, the location of the stop loss. Let me just get my little drawing tool here to make my life a little easier. So real simple, um, it's a MACD stochastic crossover with a trailing stop and when the conditions are met you're going to get an arrow uh, it'll be a short or a long right and uh, similar to the bits you'll have your little green or you know enter line that's where you'll want to uh, enter the market and then your red uh, stop loss right we don't we don't really want to hold on to a trade if it exceeds that value um, that's not part of the roller coaster strategy. Now, real simple, the signal comes in, uh, we get the two lines, we can prep the trade. We want to enter at the green, uh, place our stop at the, uh, at the red, and let the market work itself out. Now, a lot of the questions that I have seen uh, you guys ask uh, about roller coasters, you know, sometimes we get these pretty wide uh, stops. And, uh, you know, there are ways to reduce that. And, uh, you know, the most recent and, and 
best way would be to trade the micro e mini contracts or the micro NASDAQ contracts. I don't know if they're called micro e minis. It's kind of doesn't make sense, but it's, um, you know, a tenth the value or size of the e mini contract. And thus, it, it reduces risk. And I think it's a great idea if you have, um, you know, an account that you don't want to blow out. Um, you know, a small account, perhaps, where, you know, a $500 loss could be, you know, detrimental, or you just overall want to participate in these wild swings, but you don't want to do it with that full risk on the E-minis, try the micros, they trade exactly the same, and there's pretty good volume and liquidity. Not that it matters, because to me, you know, futures are probably the most liquid markets in the world. Uh, you're gonna have, you're gonna get filled at whatever price you're you're looking to to get in or get out. Um, but with the rise in volatility, the spread does widen up a little bit. So um, I guess that's the the only little bit of danger, but it's not ridiculously widespread. So um, what's also important to note here is we don't want to take just every single roller coaster trade that we see, though as tempting as that might be. Um, you know, we want to use support and resistance um, in order to, you know, plan out which trades have the better opportunity uh, to give us a, a winning trade, right? So we're looking for probability. And if we're trading into support and we're looking and, and we have a short uh, potential trade, you know, maybe we want to over, you know, rethink that trade. It could work, but then again, it has the possibility to not work. But based on our best research on uh, with support and resistance, it might not be the right trade. Whereas the opposite, right? If we have a long setup, but we're running into resistance, it might not be the best trade to take. <clears throat> All right. Um, that is a great question, Gary. How is the stop determined? I, I want to have an answer for you. And I think it's based on uh, the range of the past, uh, you know, X amount of bars. Because uh, I've noticed that pattern where you can see here you have your entry and then your stop. And then if you look back, right there, you kind of have like your entry, which is a low pivot. And right here, you have your stop, which is a pivot high of an X amount of numbers back. I'm not sure what the exact number is, but that would be my best guess. And you can see the same pattern right here. Here's a pivot high, there's the stop. Um, here's a pivot low, there's the entry. Okay, that's my best guess. And it, it looks correct. Uh, if you want an exact answer, uh, definitely contact uh, our support desk via email. I believe the email would be support at tradethefifth.com. You know, pretty simple. So where do we get these support and resistance lines from? If you're a member of the 5K club, uh, there is, you know, when you access your membership on the website, uh, Paul updates these levels. Um, I want to say on a weekly basis, uh, if any new level of support and resistance uh, comes up, right, or, or forms, then I'm sure he'll update it right away so that we have, you know, the, the best uh, knowledge uh, as quickly as possible in order to uh, have the, you know, just a slightly easier time in trading. But with the rise in volatility, I really like the one minute chart. We could take a look at higher time frames as well um, in a sec here, but I just kind of want to go through a couple of the trades for today. Let's just start at the beginning of the day. Um, and just kind of, let me just push it up to the one hour here real quick. You know, looking at the recent levels that we've been trading, right? Uh, let's call a high of 8,000 and a low of uh, 6,800. 
in the NASDAQ futures. We'll jump to the S&P as well. And then we could also take a look at the Dow, we could take a look at the Russell um, or any other futures markets uh, you guys wanna definitely take a look at, okay? And we could also take a look at stocks. And, but I definitely wanna just uh, you know get the show moving here showcase uh, the indicator and, and its potential. So looking at the one hour, again, the range, recent range, 8,000, uh, 6,800. And in between that specific range, I take a look at the zones. And again, these are provided for, uh, through the 5K membership. And looking at the NASDAQs, between that range I just uh, said, you know, we got some uh, levels of support and resistance. And again, remember the, the cool little saying, well, you know, resistance becomes support, support becomes resistance. Uh, it, it really all depends on where price action is at the current moment. And at the current moment, we have resistance uh, above here 72.24 to 72.71 and all the way up here at 73.90 let's call it to 74.24 where we have some support we got some support here at 69.55 down to 69.37 so those are where I can expect support and resistance switching over to the one minute with the increase in the in the range um, you know, I definitely like the one minute. So looking at today, let's, let's start it here from the open 930. First trade, we have it right in open space, right? So here we have, you know what, let me change the color. I don't like that blue. Let's go with that red for resistance. So we opened right here at 930, right? So price is trading right here, meaning we have resistance all the way up here at 72.25 to 72.70, as well as uh, 73.88 to 74.25. And again, these aren't exact numbers, okay? These are not exact numbers. These are ranges, right? Uh, I could take a look at the at the Excel sheet here, and you know, it'll be you know. 7222 you know where i marked it happens to be 25 but it's it's all comparable i mean relative right so uh and then we also have support all the way down here and i'll mark that down in green uh 6952 to 6941 but for this first trade we're really just focused on the long because that's the trade that was given so we had resistance up here, we have support down here, and we're just kind of in the middle of it all. So we have a lot of space between the entry of this trade, which is right there sitting at, let's call it 7135, all the way up to 7225, okay? so. Heading into resistance, 35 to 22, we got about, or 25, that would make it a, a potential 90 point uh, potential that we could have on this trade. As you can see, it definitely had more, but you know, without the benefit of hindsight, all we have is a long at 71.35 and a potential target since we're heading into resistance at 72.21. Does that make sense? Yeah, the, the counter trend trade would be, you know, uh, try to see if you can short it at these levels of resistance, try to see if you can get long at these levels of support, but that that's a completely different strategy and, you know, different set of risk rules, you know, for our purposes, we want to focus on the roller coaster. So, you know, that's a, you know, it's a great question, but, uh, you know, I just want to keep it on our focus here. So there's your trade. Okay. 71.35, let's call it with a stop at 70.10. 
that's huge, right? That's about 130 points stop where your first potential target is 72.21, right? Most people would find that um, that risk reward not really the best. I don't find it the best, but again, there are ways to reduce risk, right? And if 130 point stop in the E-mini is too much, then the micros are one way to do it. And the beautiful thing about the micro E-minis is uh, or the micro contract, I, I, I don't trade them personally. Um, I'm, I'm okay with the E-mini contract. So if I say micro E-minis or micro futures, I don't know what's politically correct, <laughs> but uh, I hope you guys understand what I'm talking about. Right, so the micros are one tenth the value. So pretty much per point, uh, we're looking at two dollars. Right, so 130 points. We just whip out the calculator here. There we go. Took a little longer than I expected to load. So $2, right? So we have $2, multiply that by, uh, how much was it? 130 points. You know, total risk on this trade is now $260 on just one contract in the micro versus $2,600, um, right? Times 10, $2,600 if you were trading one contract of the E-mini. So it's a drastic change and it, you know, it should potentially make you a little bit more comfortable trading the micros with the roller coaster because I mean, you guys can see just, just the watch list over here. It's, it's been common occurrence that we have these humongous 300, 400 point gains uh, or losses more, uh, more recently in the NASDAQ, uh, the Dow where we've been, getting used to seeing thousand point ranges, uh, multiple thousand point ranges, uh, S&P 500, you know, we've seen ranges of hundreds of points. So rather than taking on that full risk, right? $2,600 with one contract versus $260 risk with one contract, that makes a lot more sense if we're trying to preserve capital while wanting to uh, participate in these, you know, wild swings. And, you know, on a trade that's working and you want to add a little bit more risk, right? You can do so. Uh, that's, again, a little bit more subjective. I don't have specific rules on how to add to winning positions, but it's something you can do, right? If you're looking to be a little bit more risk adverse, um, especially after you have a winning run. Anyways, so with resistance up here, um, we knew that there was potential that this long trade could go the distance here for at least 90 points. It did, and it actually gave more. If you follow the trailing stop, that one, this trade here had you out at 72.84 from 71.35, which is what we were calling it, right? So pretty good, not a bad trade. Now that we're kinda up here, this resistance uh, becomes support. Okay, uh, since price is trading above it, this up here is still resistance. And here we have a roller coaster trade again. Okay, this one to the long side. Entry would be right at the green line, so we would either place a buy stop. Um, at 7275 or you know we hit the buy market button which it's okay but don't expect to get filled at the greatest price but with futures markets again being very liquid hitting the buy market button is okay it's mostly in the stock market like if you take a look at a spread of google uh, for example you know it could be trading at 12, you know, the ask could be 1200, the bid could be uh, 1998, $2 widespread, you hit the market button, you might get filled a little greater than, uh, than 1200. 
you know, it, it, with the wide spreads, it's not ideal. You're, you're starting off at a loss, but with the futures, I think the buy market button is okay. So that's, that's the way you like to uh, place your order. I think you could do that. Um, buy limit, uh, buy stop limit, it would have to be since we're wanting to crack this price of 72, 77. Um, I think that's fine. Now, what I really like about this one, what's, what do I like about this one, right? From everything I've said, anybody want to take a guess? What do I like about this trade? And we'll take a look at how it, uh, how it performed. Exactly. It's, it's right at support, right? We hit this level of resistance. We came down right into support and we're trying to get out of that. We have a roller coaster setup. So if we were to get filled here at 7277, let's just start moving to the right here. See how this one performed. And where do we have a potential of going, right? We have the potential to trade uh, up to 73.88, 74.25. That's where we're meeting up with resistance, resistance that held at this, uh, at this pivot that was created because of the resistance, right? So we continue on to the right. And right there, it hit that level of resistance. And it could be a good place to take some of, you know, if you got multiple contracts, it could be a great way, a great place to take some off, right? Or uh, if you wanna just do it the simple way, just let the trade continue and wait for that trailing stop to get taken out before you close your trade. Make sense? Let's see, this one hit. Uh, my drawings are not to scale with the chart, but I do have uh, drawing these lines here on thinkorswim. Uh, let's continue to the right. Let's kind of, nope, almost hit the trailing stop. Continuing to move higher. Makes a high and it looks like here is where it takes out the, uh, the trailing stop. And you could tell it took out the trailing stop because the roller coaster stops drawing after that bar. Make sense? Um, you know, it, it's it, that's great question, Trevor. Um, other than the roller coaster, the potential that we could have. You know, off of this roller coaster, right? So let's just okay. We wanna we wanna enter around here. Let's say we don't have the roller coaster, okay? But how? What other way could we look at this and and, and say to ourselves, we can potentially go back up to that seventy three um, eighty eight area? Well, at that point, it's it's uh, it's just technical analysis, right? So. Um, off of the open, we made a low here. Uh, we found a little bit of resistance here, but it didn't hold here again. And then we traded higher. This is where we found the most amount of resistance. We tried to test it. So we have our low. Let's call this a um, our high. Here, since we didn't take it out or trade up to it, this is a lower high and right here was the previous low made before this lower high was created. So uh, this would be a higher low because, you know, we don't have anything, any other lows uh, higher than this. So this is the higher low. We made a lower high and we bust right through that area, but we land on some support. Now the ultimate low is this one, right? So like the total bias just kind of changes if we take out that, that first low that it's pretty obvious right there, right? Um, but we didn't, we just created um, a, lower, um, a lower low with respect to this one, 
but still a higher low with respect to the you know the lows right here um, shortly after the open right let's just focus on that and then not only that but we're we're right at support so there's potential that this trade could rebound back and try to retest this area. Um, so just, it, it, it's tricky, but you know, that's another reason this trade could potentially have gone to that area, but we wanna focus on the roller coaster. So the roller coaster was what gave us that final confirmation. I mean, it came off of resistance to support. We got the roller coaster long, so, um, and the potential to try to smash through that high was there because, hey, if this support holds, you know, we're, where are we gonna go? Just sideways forever? No, we're gonna try to go either one direction or the other. Either this support is proven wrong and we get busted or we trade higher. Simple as that. Now, ugh, kind of ruined it here, but here's the other one. We hit resistance. And we get a roller coaster short. Get, uh, the entry is right here. Gives us plenty of space up until that next support area. And just look at how these support areas react. I mean, you know, some of them get broken, but not without any bit of resistance. Like this one was broken, but you know, a couple of bars of resistance, you know, a couple of bars didn't want to bust through um before it finally did but here we didn't want to bust through this area we had kind of two cracks at these highs uh consolidation and then we had that roller coaster um you know macd crossover which would be bearish in this case with the short now with all this open space here and a trade coming off of resistance, we, we definitely like the short side if we can get it and we got it here with the roller coaster. That trade also had a pretty good run. Um, came right down to that support and eventually took out the trailing stop uh, right around here. Okay. And then off of this support, we got another roller coaster long. So you can see it is, it's kind of like a roller coaster. I, I mean, it's a pretty, f you know, funny name, uh, but you know, it just kind of goes and goes and goes. And now we're back at another trade here. And uh, you know, just a couple of hours have passed in the day. So we got a long here, this one at 7,300 on the money. And it was long and we like it, why? Because it's coming off of a support area and again, Yes, we've tested these areas, okay? I'm not saying, you know, we hit resistance and it's never gonna be resistance or support anymore. You know, what was resistance, like this becomes support. And what was support becomes resistance, but we don't, we don't really have any evidence of that yet. We have, you know, we have resistance that's holding here and resistance here that became support. All right, so we got another trade here, 7,300. The risk on this one would be something like 60 points. And again, you know, we, if I whip out the calculator here, 60 points on one contract of the uh, E-mini, it's $20 a point. So your risk here is about $1,200 per contract on this trade, okay? To some of us, that's pretty nice. To some of us, that could be a little bit too much. So the micro contract would be the way to go with this trade, right? Um, the risk would be $120 or 10 times the, uh, well, not 10 times, but, you know, uh, divide this by 10 because it's one tenth uh, the size. So divide that by 10 and it's $120 risk, which sounds a lot nicer than yeah, $1,200. But also the reward um, is, is going to be one-tenth that of the E-mini. Okay. I think we all understand that. And take a look at this one right at the resistance area here at 73.88. And trailing, trailing stop taken out here. Um, 
in this specific trade. So today was kind of funky, right? We, we went green, we went red, we went green, we went red. Um, you know, overall uh, in the market, it wasn't like all the way down red or all the way up green. You know, today was pretty much a trading day. Um, something we, we haven't seen uh, too often in this rapid sell off. So, roller coasters. So, we got one, two, three, four winners so far. Uh, we can keep going. I'm just going to fast forward here. All right. We got a roller coaster short right here. Uh, doesn't trigger automatically, so it kind of crosses over. And this is a great example here of not wanting to trade uh, along at a resistance area. So we get a roller coaster long, switches from short to long. And this one we probably wouldn't want to take because we don't have a lot of room between the entry and where resistance is currently at. Okay. Now remember, doesn't matter if you have, you know, a space here of three ticks, 10 ticks, you know, just going to make this little drawing here. If price is above a level we're looking at, then that level we're looking at is support above it resistance. So right here, there's obviously there's it's not a lot of space, you know, call it, I don't know, three, maybe five points since, you know, we're in highly volatile times. Um, it's still resistance because price is trading underneath it. Right. So let's, let's not judge it differently because we're, we're so close to it. If it's above it, Resistance below it support. So that's a trade we wouldn't want to take. This short wouldn't have been that bad. You know, it had plenty of space uh, to get down to the next support. So it had, you know, price had the ability to move, but, uh, you know, it didn't work out because it didn't trigger. This one triggered and it lost. But why would this one not be a good one to take? Well, this is why we got resistance right there. Then this next one here, we break through the resistance and we don't, we don't really break out enough to call it support now. Um, though I did find a, you know, one hint of support after it did cross above and close above this uh, 74.25, little tail right there overall uh, within a resistance area. So this short was okay. You know, this short to me, pretty good because from the short entry, we certainly had uh, plenty of room to move to the downside and this one would be the only loser. Okay. And the risk, uh, you know, full complete loss on this one, 7384, 7460. Um, so how much is that? Can't even do math in my head right now. So what was it? 7385, so 7380, 7450. So that would be about eight, you know, pretty much 80 points. And again, if I bust out the calculator, how much does 80 points equal out to per one contract in the E mini versus the micro? And, you know, that should be your first hint at what type of trade, uh, which specific one you want to uh, trade. Okay. Let's take a look at what we have right now. And we actually have a roller coaster short right now. And I think this is pretty good. I would take this trade here, 7182. Okay, if, if I were to stay up all night trading, <laughs> this would be a trade looking at. Um, I definitely like the trades during the open market. But if we take a look at this one, uh, we have resistance right up here, right? We busted out through this support. Now it's resistance and, you know, potential to move lower here. Where would the next support be? 
I don't think we have that information. No, we do. Hold on. Next to four is all the way down here. Um, I don't think I skipped it. I'm looking at the ex at the 5K Club Express, uh, sorry, uh, Excel sheet here. And it's between 7,033 and 6,958. So we got 58, but we don't have 7,033. So let's go 7,033. Come on. Okay, call it there, 32 and a half, close enough to 33. So this trade definitely has room to trade lower, okay? This trade here in the NASDAQ, currently, you know, the time right now is 18.34, okay, real-time data. And we have a roller coaster short here uh, at 71.82.75 with good potential. Uh, to get down to 70.32, okay? Will it get there? Your guess is as good as mine, um, but the trailing stop should uh, trigger here uh, soon. It's gotta move uh, just enough for that trailing stop to start trailing the market lower if the market does take a pretty big flush here. Um, and it's, it's funny too, right? Like, I mean, we, we've been used to these multiple thousand point moves where, you know, and also a Dow that was valued 10,000 points above what it is right now, you know, 300 points at 29,000 was not equal to 1.8%. So with these higher percentages, uh, these net changes are going to be are getting smaller and smaller the lower we go. So it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, nice trigger on um, on the Russell micros and the YM micros. Let's take a look. Let's let's do the micro MYM. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, MYM. Uh, that one's triggering right now, uh, but I don't have any levels of support and resistance drawn out on this one. So let's draw. Let's draw them out. Uh, I'm gonna switch over to a little bit of a higher time frame. Let's switch over to the one hour. Um, let's take a look at Y and Y M C and B. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, all right. So the Y M, it's it's mostly resistance. Uh, I don't see anything in the form of support just yet. I mean, we could find our own levels of support and resistance as well. Uh, but resistance we're looking at here at twenty thousand three sixty four which is right around um, where the, uh, well, this is on a one hour, sorry. So we're not trading here based off of the one hour. We're looking at the, at the one minute. I just have a higher time frame to get a picture of what the market has been, uh, it's been up to here. And then 20,206. Just gonna mark it there. Um, so we got resistance, uh, where support it could be. Uh, I think we're gonna have to move to a daily chart here. And even the daily chart, uh, how many days am I looking at? Five years, we're at a five year low, I don't believe. Oh, you know what it is, it's, it's, it's the micro. That's, that's what the problem is here. Micro started trading May of last year, so that's the only data I have. So let's go to the actual Dow. Now we got some data. <clears throat> I'm like, no way this is five years. <laughs> all right, so we're trading all the way down here, 19,000. Um, I mean, it is a pivot low, but it's too recent. Next low, I see 17,000. We got a little cluster of trading down here. And then I know it's, I, I can see it fine. Might be a little hard through your screen. Right here, 1874. It's pretty much where the lows were today. Um, let's just mark the low of the day, which was around 18,811. 18,811. Now let's switch back over to one minute. And there's our, our short, it has the potential to go down to 18.811. Uh, 
resistance, I got to switch over to mini YM or micro, sorry, micro YM, micro YM. I mean, resistance is way above and support is uh, 811 we talked it about. Okay, mark it right there. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's got room to, to move lower. Okay, it's got room to move lower. And the risk, uh, you know, the entry is 509. The stop is 689. So 689 minus 509. It's about 180 points. Okay. On the full contract, $5 a point. That's about $900 risk on this trade. And again, I'm just illustrating this for example. Um, you know, I personally don't like trading overnight. I like trading the actual, uh, during actual hours. And I know volatility has made it popular to trade overnight, but I, I still prefer the, the, the open market. Um, you know, it makes, makes me go to sleep at night. Anyways, 900 points risk on this trade. If we were trading the micro, we would divide that number by 10 since it's one tenth the size and it's about $90 risk on this trade. <clears throat> and the potential, uh, could be, I hate to say unlimited, right? Unlimited. It could, go, it could only go down to zero, but we know that's not likely. So 18,809 is a potential. Okay. What other market we want to look at guys? Let's, let's, let's aside from indices, what do we want to look at? Gold, oil, is there a specific stock? You guys want to see ultra bonds, which would be the 30 year, right? ZB is not really a 30 year. <laughs> uh, so we got copper, crude oil. Let's start with copper since that one, you know, priority. Um, the heck is the symbol for copper? H E H E H G. HG, not HE. HE would be lean hogs. Why don't I have copper here? Here we go. <clears throat> okay, copper, we might have to find the groove on this one. Okay, we might have to find the groove on this one because the one minute you got all these little gaps uh, just kind of shows you not the lack of liquidity, just the lack of uh, tr trading volume that happens here. Uh, market gets bleh. Let's, let's see what a five minute looks like. Okay. And this is what, you know, finding the groove would be like, right? Testing out different time frames. Okay. So, so far on the five minute, we have a winner, a trade that didn't trigger, trade that didn't trigger, um, a winner here long. Let's look at some more. Tr didn't trigger, winner, loser. So, first loser. Winner, gigantic behemoth winner, no trigger. Um, trade is a loser, two that didn't trigger, uh, one that didn't trigger. Um, so the five minute looks okay. Um, looks like it has, you know, from time to time, it's, it's, it has uh, a few of these pretty big trades. So, um, Looking at the five minute, it's currently on a roller coaster trade. Uh, let's let's look at a higher time frame here, like a one hour, just to see if we can find any support or resistance. I mean, they found resistance here at uh, two dollars and eighteen eighteen sixty four. So let's you know we could just mark that. You know, it could break it, right? But at the current moment, it's still. We're still going to call it resistance. Uh, if it breaks it and we trade above it, then it'll be support. Um, here, before with that big flush, we had a little bit of trading. Uh, let's call it resistance around, uh, we will, you know, uh, 3233. That's after the decimal place. And then let's go even further out in time to see if we have any support. Um, so this market trade did trade below that $2 level, you know, whole numbers like two tend to be psychological. I hate them. A lot of people like them. 
Um, but if we kind of go back in time, we have a pivot low here that found support and another low here that found support as well. Um, 20, uh, let's call it, sorry. 876, 0876, and 0554. Okay, so just marking up a couple of areas. Let's switch back over to that nice uh, short-term chart that we like, which was the five minute. And look at that. Um, we definitely had it off of resistance, which came off of this trading here. So that carried over resistance, 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 resistance. Finally, get the roller coaster short, and this has potential to trade down to, you know, call it 876. Had a 15 minute that triggered this afternoon. That looks pretty good as well. I mean, uh, same potential down to A76. Same potential down to A76. 15 minute looks nice as well here. I mean, volatility is making a, um, a lot of these uh, time frames look pretty nice. Super big risk on the 15 minute though. <clears throat> as far as I know, there's no micro contract for, uh, for copper. Let's take a look at crude oil. Let's switch it to the one minute. Let's see what the one minute looks like. Um, big spike at the close of trading here. And then the rest is just kind of dead trading. Uh, let's take a look before the close of the um, of the uh, regular trading hours or the RTH. Okay, so this is the one minute. One minute has one, two. This one didn't trigger. Um, three. It might have. It looks like it just might have since it did print a stop. Um, so I think that did trigger. So this one would be a loser. So loser, winner, 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 winner. Keep scrolling. Winner, no trade. And winner, winner, winner. So I'll, the one minute looks good. Um, let's let's try out like a five minute. Bump it up a bit. The five minute is currently in a roller coaster trade. Um, but we also have winner, no trade. Loser, winner, no trade, winner, no trade, no, no, sorry, this winner, uh, winner, winner, but, you know, some of these risks do look pretty big. There is a E-mini contract, there isn't a micro contract for crude oil, but there is an E-mini contract for crude oil, um, forward slash QM, that would be on uh, on Thinkorswim, if you got Trace Station, um, I think you could just ask them or, or you know, Google what is the ticker symbol for E Mini Crude Oil on Trade Station. I'm sure a page will pop up. Uh, this is technically a winner, but it's one that just kind of gets you mad because it did nothing other than cost you a little in commission. Winner, 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 winner. So, uh, well, this this one's kind of break even, right? This one's kind of break even, call it a loss even of, of a few ticks. I wouldn't be crazy saying that. Winner, winner, no trade, winner, but again, another kind of break even-ish trade. Winner, winner. Uh, I kind of like the five minute now more than the one minute, <laughs> but if you had to switch between the two to try to find a trade here, uh, the one minute has a short, but again, it's after hours, so. Not too crazy about after hours, especially in crude oil. Um, so support and resistance, right? Uh, let's take a look. I know Paul definitely has some levels here. Last resistance updated was between 27.59 and 25.96. So that's not too far off, but 25.96 is right here which is currently resistance so we're you know the roller coaster is not right 
at resistance, but close enough. Um, you know, we could potentially move lower. I know we made a recent low yet, uh, a new low, 18 year low yesterday. Let's take a look at the daily chart here. I mean, that's greater than five years ago. And I got to go up to a weekly of 20 years. Six. I mean, this is as much data. It looks like, oh no, I'm looking at 15 years. So I would probably adjust that. Let's do 20 years. Now that makes more sense. The 20 year low is down here at 17, 16, 16, 17. Um, definitely this was support here. Now it's resistance because we're prices uh, below it. Uh, next area of support, I would call it 23.98. And that's this area of trading here. Between 23 and, 90, uh, 23 and 24. And then we would have um, another area which would be these lows here between 18 and 17. Um, I mean, we're looking so far back, it's, it's insane. Um, if anything, I think the, the best thing to do is let the market do its thing and let it create some new levels of support and resistance. But the five minute looks good, one minute looks good. Um, let's bump it up to like a 15 minute. 15 minute looks horrible. Um, loser, 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 no trade, no trade, winner. Winner, loser, no trade. 15 minute is not groovy. Um, I mean, you, you do get to see the stop uh, before the, the trade is officially triggered. Like, for example, if we take a look at this here, you can see, you know, the trade is here. There's your signal. Uh, price never broke above that, so this didn't trigger. But you can see the haze, this little cloud rectangle here. The stop is always going to be at the bottom. Um, Usually when it triggers, it'll draw the red line, which also becomes the trailing stop eventually after it's traded, you know, X amount of uh, distance before it starts trailing. Um, so you do get to see it, uh, but it's not as visible as, as the red line that eventually turns into the trailing stop. So the 15 minute is absolute garbaggio. Um, so let's take a look at a one hour. Uh, I mean, can't knock it. It had this gigantic trade, call it lucky though. Um, and some other trades, but you know, the one hour, you know, we're swing trading now. Um, at this point, trading futures options would probably be the best way to limit risk because, um, it's just too much range, uh, too, too much leverage in crude oil. Um, I think one way to reduce that would be, you know, do, do an options trade. So if you got a long, maybe a, a vertical spread or depending on the value, um, see if you could sell call spreads, sorry, uh, sell put spreads. 22 to 21, try to collect a little bit of credit. But that's this, again, that's complicating things. I know Paul wants me to keep it simple. But I, what can I say? I, I like, you know, I, I, I've, I've done so many different kinds of trades um, where you just, you just kind of get a feel for, you know, what trades can reduce risk when you have some, a situation like this where you want to take a trade, but it's hard. Um, either way on the one hour, um, you know, this was support and it broke and now it's resistance taking along at a resistance area. 
probably not the best idea. Um, it is a larger time frame. Could work, but seems like we're going to face that short-term resistance, um, where you know, on a five-minute and a one-minute, you kind of have a, a good a good go. I think on the five-minute, this one trail stopped right here at twenty-five seventy-four. Uh, the cyan, cyan color or that blue color, that's just, um, I mean, it, it just, it just covers the range that price went between the entry and the highest point. And it just creates kind of that range. And it just... It's just a color for, for you to visually see that because the, you know, the trade is over right here. We don't need to have that continue on. So if we didn't have that color, we might think the trade is still on and that's, it's just visuals. It's just visuals. What was the other trade we wanted to look at? I forgot here. So crude copper to do, 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 do AD. AD, is that a stock? I'll type it in and see what we get. A stock that doesn't exist or used to or ceased to exist. Anyways, um, Aussie dollar. Ah, okay. Let me, let me, let me give it my best shot at, at Forex here. So that would be AUD USD, right? Uh, let's, so we don't have as much volatility in the currencies. I don't think, um, taking a look at a one, a one minute might be too small, uh, especially for Forex. Let's push it to an hour and higher. Um, but we, ideally we'd want to know, uh, where potential support and resistance is ideally. Um, I don't have that information. We can pick out some spots. Little flattening here between fifty nine sixty and sixty twenty seven. We can mark that up as resistance. Whoa. Um, Obviously, these lows here, um, the market bought it off of that area, so there's some kind of support in there. <clears throat> and right here, we had some resistance, kind of small um, resistance. It broke, it was support, it didn't hold, and now it's resistance again. Um, Aside from trying to locate support and resistance, uh, let's let's find it. If, let's see if we have a groove with a one hour here. So so far this trade was a winner. Now we have a bit of a drawdown on it. With you know it's, it's not looking pretty. Uh, then again, if you just let it ride, let's see what happens. But other than this one, which is a question mark, we have winner, winner. Winner, uh, break even ish with a nice profit that got given back. You know, nice winner here. This one's a loser with a winner. And these would be somewhat swing trades. Looks like average hold times looking like a day or two. Um, winner, break even right there. Uh, this one triggered and lost. This one triggered and lost. This one triggered and lost. Um, not very groovy, but it's it's got some nice trades. I mean, look look at some of these, like this one. I just skipped over one over here. This one. Uh, so some got potential, some don't. Uh, this, you know, the one the one hour is kind of average. Uh, let's take a look at a four hour time frame. And Leah. 
It doesn't look any better in recent times and not too many trades uh, with the exception of like this one and this one, which are pretty big. The rest are kind of mediocre. Uh, too much risk on the table, I think. Uh, chasing the one, uh, the daily. Daily, daily, daily. Mm, seems the higher time, the higher the time frame we go, the the riskier um, and the less groovy it goes. Uh, the 30 minute looks okay, not super groovy. So, so far the one hour looks the best, but uh, you know, air on the side of caution. <clears throat> Take a look at the futures. Australian dollar futures, a lot of the same, right? A lot of the same, but because it's a little bit better, um, let's take a look at a smaller time frame because the, these um, currency futures are pretty good. The five minute looks horrendous. Just, just by looking at a few signals, I can go back even more. And it's more of the same story. I wouldn't touch this one on a five minute. I don't think a one minute would be appropriate. Let's do a 30 minute. 30 minute, 30 minute looks okay so far. 30 minute almost looks as, as good as a one hour on the spot Forex. So 30 minute on 6A looks pretty, pretty good. Again, not the greatest chart, I guess, on the roller coaster. But not not too horrible, not too horrible. I'm not sure if. Blah, blah, blah. Never mind. I was going to talk options again. Um, let's take a look at the euro. Got some drawings here on the euro. Let's just remove all this crap. Anyways, euro on the thirty minute. Looking for that groove. Yeah. Pretty, it's not terrible, okay? I'm, I'm, it's kind of in the same league as the, <laughs> as the Aussie dollar uh, futures. The one hour looks a bit better. I take that back. <laughs> uh, not very groovy on a one hour. Um, these are the futures. Let's try the five minute. And again, not impressed. So just from everything I've spoken about today, volatility seems to help this indicator. So if we kind of like switch back to let's let's do um, like a Russell on a, on short shorter time frames. I mean, the one minute uh, seems to be the the nicest. Uh, again, base, you know, kind of supplementing with support and resistance. Uh, we could find those really nice trades. I mean, just kind of going back over the recap with the NASDAQ on the one minute, following those levels of support and resistance. I mean, it's just some, some pretty nice trades, All right? And some of them will give you a little bit of heat, but if you just let the indicator flow, let the trade flow naturally. You know, sometimes you're gonna have these these drawdowns and take that heat at first, but uh, you know, kind of using hindsight to fuel <laughs> your your hopes <laughs> uh, in in the next trade. Um, <laughs> I hate to say it that way that that it doesn't come out nice, but. But hey, I mean, that's how we all think sometimes, right? Sometimes we're just like, oh, well, you know, these trades look pretty nice. I'm just, I'm just going to hope the next one looks good too. I mean, we've all been there and we all do it. Probably to this day, I still do it. Okay, I'll admit it. To this day, I still do it. <laughs> but um, it helps. It helps you stay in a trade because we see this happen um, a lot of times where it takes a little bit of heat before it really takes off. Um, you know, having that gut to go through that heat um, is certainly important. And it's a skill you unfortunately have to develop. It, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. 
All right, so that's that's it for our time here. Um, uh, you know, again, just be careful out there. Try not to get sick. You know, chances are, you know, if you're young and healthy or older and healthy, you might just be all right. But you know, we don't we don't want to go around infecting everybody. So uh, most of us are traders full time. Some of us part time. Um, I've switched uh, over to the part time. I think I told you guys at the very beginning. You know, I've, most of most of my money I made um, over the last three years. But um, excuse me, over the last four years, I, I keep forgetting we're in like 2020. Um, and then like seven years of just struggling and failing. But um, you know, now I've kind of switched over to, to the part-time because I, I do manage some properties, got a little bit of passive income coming in that I'm kind of scared of if, you know, people lose their jobs, I might not have that income coming in. Anyways, let me not load my, this ain't therapy, okay? Anyways, let's, uh, oh, CNBC, tune in now for special coverage, no thanks. I'd rather watch a show on Netflix, something to take my mind off of all this COVID-19 stuff. But uh, I do keep an eye on the futures. I mean, futures are getting pretty hammered here. Uh, NASDAQ's down close to 2%. Dow's down close to over 2% now. S&P over 2%. Russell, I mean, the other day, you guys remember Russell the other day? Down 16% at the lows. I was like, yo, this is Black Monday. It was Monday. This is the Black Monday we've been talking about. But uh, anyways, take care, everybody. Uh, hope you enjoyed uh, today's video. Hope you took something from it. Uh, I know we only have an hour to talk, and uh, sometimes that doesn't feel like enough. But uh, again, quick recap. Support and resistance. Get those levels. The 5K Club, uh, you know, it's only like $60 a year. Uh, to get these levels, Paul likes to, you know, pump it up. I should be charging $80. <laughs> um, but it's $60 a year. Uh, so it's, it's pretty decent investment to get some pretty nice levels of support and resistance, which help with not just roller coaster, but with all of the other trades. So I bid you all farewell until next Thursday when we're going to go over roller coaster Elliot waves bits see which see how we can combine them all and uh you know pretty much a, a, a trilogy is uh, what we like to call it okay i'm gonna get out of here now have a good night everybody uh and i'll see you next week